Hey guys, welcome to this video. On this video, I am going to talk about linear regression and uh, what exactly linear regression is, how do we come up with the model of a line or the least squares regression line on our TI Inspire calculator, and then um, just a, a few vocab things and, and some, um, some basic introduction and information on what we would do if we were trying to do some of these problems in our AP Stats class. Um, this again is a kind of an introduction, so hopefully I can go through as much stuff as possible in, in a little bit of time that I have, and uh, and then we'll uh, do some more work in class on on actually uh, doing all these types of problems. Um, for those of you that aren't in my class, uh, hopefully this is kind of just the introduction part, and I'll have a few more videos up here about um, some examples on on doing you know different things with linear regression. So. Let's take a look at a problem here. The table shows the increase in Halloween candy sales over a seven year period. Oh, P odd, what is that? Let's change that to period. Um, as reported by the National Confectioners Association. And using these data, predict the amount of sales for 2002. So a lot of times what we wanna do is, we wanna create a model using our quantitative data. And we wanna use that model to, to make a prediction. Right, so um, let's go ahead and make our, our scatter plot and our uh, model, which is our linear regression model, and we'll do that in our TI Inspire. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Inspire out here. And in my Inspire, hopefully, you've gone over how to create a, a spreadsheet. So we'll go ahead and create a spreadsheet, and this is bivariate data. So in our bivariate data, we're going to want to title these two things. I'm going to go ahead and say year, and then um, we'll say candy. And I'm going to use uh, 1995 year zero. We don't really want to use 1995, um, and I'll tell you why in, in just a second. Um, so we usually want to start the first year with year zero. And I'll just go ahead and label two, three, four, five, six, and I think we go to seven is 2001. And then I'll enter in my other data, 1.474, 1.660. Six, ah, nine eight five, and two point zero three five. Uh, maybe it was six of them then. One six six zero one seven zero eight one seven eight seven eight nine six five. Okay, so there were. Okay, so let's delete this one here. So we've got six years there. Ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand. But we're starting at year zero. Now, the reason we start at year zero is because we want to make sure that our y-intercept, when we make our line, makes sense. We don't want to make our y-intercept, um, you know, the y-intercept is, is basically year zero. And if we use, um, you know, 1995 as our year, then our year zero would be, you know, like actually like year zero, which, you know, I'm not sure, you know, in regards to what religion you are, uh, I'm not sure Jesus really, you know, sold Halloween candy. So we don't have data for that. So we really want to make it make sense. We're going to use um, you know, zero as our as our year 1995. All right. So after we do, we enter in our data. We're going to create a a, uh, a data and statistics page. And then down here, we're going to go and click and enter in our year. And usually, you know, time is going to be our explanatory variable. We're going to click and add candy, and this is our response variable. And we've got our scatter plot, so that's great. If we drew a line in here, we would have a line that represents our data. Well, we're going to, we want to find out what that line is. So there are two ways you can do this, and I'll show you the first way here, um, and then we're going to want to find our correlation coefficient in just a second, too. Um, and you're going to need to go to a different screen for that one. So let's first uh, go and draw it here. So go to menu, analyze, regression. All right, so we're gonna show our linear regression. We're gonna use A plus BX. And later on when we see, I have another video of, of using some of these uh, uh, formulas later. And I'll show you why we're gonna use this one and not MX plus B. So go ahead and do A plus BX. And we have our formula. Y equals 1.5 plus 0.09 times x and I'll go ahead and, and you know truncate those in just a second now what's going on here is this this line this line is called the least squares regression line um, 
And the reason it's called the least squares regression line is because our, our, our job here is to try to find the line, sometimes you've heard it called the line of best fit. Our job here is to try to find the line that's gonna give us, um, and I'll, I'll show you the regression. I'll show you these, uh, analyze. Um, let's go ahead and show uh, our squares here. We wanna make these little squares the, the area of these little squares as small as possible. If I moved this around, you'd be able to see that my squares, if I moved it around, my squares get bigger, and I wanna make my squares as small as possible. So here's my least squares regression line. Oop, I lost it. Let's go and show that again. So here's my uh, my least squares regression line, and let's go ahead and copy this. Um, let's go ahead and copy this picture here to my my sheet, so that I can make some notes on it. Okay, so here's my uh, my least squares regression line, and I, I don't really need the sum of the squares here, but um, I just want to see what my line is. And here are some things I want to I want to show you. So, one of the things that we notice here is that our line, you know, our line doesn't go necessarily through all the points. That that's okay. We're just looking for the the one that's going to give us the best idea of what goes on. Now, the distance from this uh, big, you know, this dot here, our actual value, the distance from that value, that actual value to my um, my line, okay, this little distance, this distance here, this distance here, this, 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 okay, they're very little in this case, but these little distances, okay, these little distances here, from here to here, okay, that's called a residual. And what our residual shows us, it sh shows us our, our predicted value our predicted value minus our actual value. Now our predicted value is what we get when we plug in our values into our regression equation. Okay, so this is our prediction and our prediction is on the line and our actual is what we were actually given. So if we wanted to do a prediction, we would just plug in our value for X and figure out what our value for Y is. Now, now in this class, you know, we really don't want to um, talk about y and x. We want to make sure that we're in context. We want to make sure that everybody knows exactly what we are talking about. Now, in the old days, in probably Algebra 1 or whatever, you would have said, well, y is equal to the number of candy sales, and x is the year, and then you just wrote the, the line down. So, but, um, we, you know, we want to write this in context to give it a little bit more oomph, to give it some meaning. So the way I would write it, um, is we're, we're going to write it this way. We're going to say that um, candy and what we do in this in this class, we, we make a little a little hat here. I don't care. Okay, and we call it candy hat. Hat means our prediction. Okay, candy hat is equal to 1.52 plus 0 0.09 year. Put that in so this is our equation of our line. This is our this is our uh, model. All right. So use your model. What's my model? No, it's not Heidi Klum. It's Candy Hat. <laughs> all right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use this model to predict uh, what the sales were in 2002. So what we're going to do is 2001 was um, I believe we said that was six, um, year six. So we're going to go and plug in year seven. So we're gonna go and plug in year seven in here. So um, we'll, we'll do that. We'll go 1.5 times two plus 0 0.09 times times seven. Okay, that's gonna give us our candy. Okay, and so we're just gonna we're gonna just figure that out in our calculator here. Okay, so I got 2.95. Um, 2.95 million dollars of candy, right? sold in uh, in year seven, which is in 2002. Okay, well, um, and, and there's something else I have to go over in terms of residuals, and I'll get back to that in just a second, but when we make a prediction outside of our data range, okay, 
2002 is outside. Um, you know, we in statistics are we're not really in the business of being um, fortune tellers. Okay, if this were to remain the same, then we'd probably have this. But we can't. We really don't want to put a, our faith in anything that's a prediction outside of our data range. That this this type of prediction is called is called a uh, an extrapolation. And we really don't want to make extrapolations. Extrapolations are outside of our data range. We we cannot. We don't know what happens in the future. Maybe maybe this thing starts curving upwards. Maybe there's a a, a massive amount of um, of candy corn made the next year, and and everybody wants to eat candy corn. I don't know what happens next year. Or maybe there's a, a drought of sugar cane, and and we lose all kinds of sugar, and um, and then we we have um, rapid sales of candy go down straight down. So. We really don't want to have a lot of faith in a prediction that's made in the future because that extrapolation won't, ha won't we don't really want to put a lot of faith in that. Okay, so last thing I want to talk about real quick is um, what about the appropriateness of my model? Well, you can always tell how appropriate your model is by how your residuals look. And what we would want to do is we want to graph the residuals, the, these residual plots here, and we want to see if that residual plot gives us a pattern. If it gives us a pattern, then this, this is not an appropriate model uh, because our, our, our data are probably not linear. Okay, so let's take a look at, at our residuals. So to find our residuals, we're going to, uh, in our graph here, we're going to hit menu, analyze, and then residuals. And it says show residual plot. So we're going to get show the residual plot and it pops down right underneath. So. You're probably saying, well, okay, what are we look? It kind of looks like a pattern, but what are we looking for for our appropriateness? Well, what you're looking for is a clear curved pattern or residuals that are either all above the x-axis here of zero or all below. You really want, if you have that, then your linear model is not appropriate. Okay, it will not be appropriate. In this case, we have, well, you know, we've got a We've got a couple. We got one, two, three that are up here on top. We've got uh, one, two, three that are you know kind of lower than the x-axis. They're kind of scattered out. I would say that there's really no clear. There's no clear pattern. Believe me, if you saw some of these, you'll see some that have a clear pattern. This doesn't really have a clear pattern. This, I would say, there's no real clear pattern. So in in the residual plot, so our linear model is appropriate. And that's exactly how you would say it if this were a question on your on your AP exam or a question that you would you, in your AP class. You would show your residual plot first of all. You would show this residual plot, and then you would say, you know, there is no clear pattern in the residuals. So our our model is appropriate. Okay, so that's kind of a, a summary of some of the things that you will do with uh, with linear regression. And uh, we'll practice these in class, and I'll maybe throw up a couple of examples. Um, but there, there are lots of things going on here, guys, and we've got much more to talk about, okay? So hopefully uh, this was a, a fairly good introduction of how we use the TI Inspire to put in um, linear regression. See you soon.